Hello football fans, Ryan here. Due to the serious nature of this video subject matter, I probably won't be making any jokes. Our editor thinks she's so very funny. So very funny. Also, I must add a disclaimer. This play is from a game my association officiated. The matter this play caused has been settled. So I'm not here to open any wounds or reopen the case or anything like that. This video is for educational purposes. As you can see, this play is from the fourth quarter of a lopsided game and a heated lopsided game at that. Check out this play from the second quarter when the game was only 24 to nothing. We have two actions of note. One where a player is thrown down around the 36 yard line, then another where a player takes another to the turf around the 32. The second action drew a 15 yard personal foul. There was also an unsportsmanlike conduct foul thrown after the play. Obviously, tensions were running high, players were getting hot under the collar. I'm sure we could utter a few more cliches here, but we'll leave it at that. Returning to the play that started this video, we have a punt return that ends in the home team's bench area. We have a late hit on K, that was the first flag, and the second flag was for an unsportsmanlike conduct. I don't know what specifically caused the unsportsmanlike conduct foul. In between, we have the matter which prompted several committee meetings. It appears a coach may have pushed a player. When I first screened this play, my initial reaction was the coach pushed the player. That's just my unofficial opinion from watching this video. I was not there. I do not have any additional information than what was on the video, nor am I advocating for one result over another. I'm just making an observation. The White Hat was told an assistant coach from the home team may have pushed an opposing player. He was told this, he did not see the alleged push. Upon hearing this news, the White Hat asked the accused coach to leave. The coach left. In the days following this game, the action between the assistant coach and the player was treated seriously by the appropriate governing bodies. Earlier this week, the schools announced they had reached a resolution, but details of this resolution were not released. There is a link in the description below to a story about the incident from a local newspaper. I think the takeaway from this incident is we need to be prepared for anything, especially when the game isn't competitive. A running clock doesn't mean officials have run out of things to do. We need to keep our focus, keep our edge, and keep hustling. I'm not saying this crew was derelict. They were doing everything I just mentioned to keep the train on the tracks. But let's face it, some things are unpreventable. People are going to do what they're going to do and often there's nothing you can do to stop them. We want to, however, learn from these videos, learn from past incidents, and I think maintaining focus and hustle in blowouts is the lesson to be learned. Ultimately, and at the very least, we want to reduce the number of these types of incidences as much as we possibly can. Remember, we are there to protect the kids not only from the rigors of football, but from the other players and unfortunately, other adults. And in a recent incident from the state of Texas, adults also includes officials. The play that opened this video got attention from a local newspaper. This play got attention from local news stations. But then again, things are bigger in Texas. We don't need to discuss takeaways from this play. We all know this is not good. I think the official thought the kid ran into him on purpose and then, after the action was over, doubled down. Oh yeah, did I not mention he threw a flag on the player and ejected him from the game. Which is interesting because it kind of implies the other members of the crew went along with it. Maybe he was the assigner no one wanted to contradict him. Also, how did the official's conference go down? I would have loved to have heard that discussion. Hey, umpire, what do you got? This player made me rip off his helmet. Oh yeah, that again? You know the drill, a 15-yard foul and an injection. Do you treat this like an inadvertent whistle or does the result of the play stand? I'm sorry, I don't know the protocol for when a crew member rips the helmet off a player. The rule book is frustratingly silent on the matter. 
Unfortunately, I haven't been able to watch the entire game, so I don't know if this was an isolated incident or something that had been brewing. Regardless, one of the involved parties is a kid and the other is an adult. Adults should not only know better, but they should also do better. The football we see on television on Saturday and Sundays is played by adults, but the football we officiate on Friday nights is played by kids. They might be big kids, they might be fast kids, they might be kids with D1 scholarships, but they are still kids, and we should interact with them accordingly. With a few exceptions, the kids we officiate are awesome. If there was a way where we could just officiate the kids and not have the other adults around, then the nationwide shortage of officials would be over. People would be lining up around the block to hang out with these young athletes and call their games. So what do you think about these plays? What successes and failures have you had with keeping blowout games on track? How do you handle coaches when they lose control, especially when they start yelling at opposing players? How do you enforce plays when your umpire rips the helmet off a player? Please put your wisdom, insights, and experiences in the comments section below. If you got something out of this video, and we hope you did, please like and subscribe. If you're already a high school football official, have a great season. If you're not a high school football official, now is the perfect time to become one. Contact the Evergreen Football Officials Association and we'll help you make it happen. Until next time, we're the EFOA, making good officials better.